Hi everybody, we're up to part 24 of this marriage covenant between us and Christ and ourselves and our spouse. And in part 24, we're going to look at emotional intelligence or emotional intimacy. I think one of the greatest challenges that faces each couple is connecting with one another on an emotional, intimate level, being emotionally intelligent, where we are able to, number one, be in tune with our feelings and be able to express how we feel and what it is we are experiencing and going through. Number two, resonate, relate, and have empathy within us for what our spouse is going through, supporting them emotionally in this. Three, be vulnerable and transparent, having no walls put up to protect ourselves. Four, knowing what to say and what not to say in any given moment. Five, knowing what to do and what not to do in any given moment. And six, just getting one another and knowing that you are safe within this relationship. These are the challenges or these are the aspects of what it is to be emotionally intelligent, to have an intimacy based on emotion, that connection that almost sense of being without having to explain oneself. And a marriage that has those elements within it is a powerful, powerful marriage. These are the elements which go into us becoming emotionally intelligent, mature as a husband or a wife. And some of these, in fact, probably most of these may not come naturally to us. And depending on our past, depending on our upbringing and what we have experienced ourselves personally is going to determine how much of these we flow in, how much of these we know and how much of these we might be starting from scratch. And a big part of being emotionally connected and intelligent comes from the way that we've been brought up. It comes from the influences that we have had in our lives, from our parents, from our grandparents, from aunties and uncles, maybe those that maybe have adopted us, depending on the influences we have had in our lives and what has been modeled to us and what we've experienced determines whether we can live these things out ourselves. If those who raised us were not emotionally available to us as children, we may in fact find it very hard to be emotionally available to our spouse and our children as well. There is such a huge difference between being physically present in a relationship and emotionally present. We can be physically present but be void of emotional intelligence or emotional intimacy. And a relationship, a healthy growing marriage needs emotional intimacy. I think many marriages and relationships struggle to this lack. And it is this lack that can cause couples to separate, especially if either spouse finds this emotional intimacy with another of the opposite sex. As a general, and I say general rule of thumb, women tend to be more emotionally intelligent, more emotionally connected than men. Hence, a man who is emotionally intelligent, when he presents himself, this can be a highly attractive quality to a woman. Being emotionally available and present is a very important part of any healthy relationship. And we have to be weary of this as couples. When we're aware of this fact, it is essential that both the husband and the wife have desire to grow in this emotional intelligence, this emotional intimacy together. We might be at different stages and growing at different paces, that's okay. But we must be growing in this together. Otherwise, as I've said, if one is and one isn't, when another comes along who is emotionally connected, intelligent, in tune with the way they feel, then this can become something that gets in the way of the marriage. 
Here are some of the ways that we are to grow or can grow in emotional intelligence or intimacy. Firstly, on a daily basis, share with one another the highs and lows of the day. Two, be vulnerable together in sharing your inner fears and insecurities with one another. You'll be amazed at how this can build emotional connection, emotional intimacy. Three, don't hide things or sweep things under the carpet and hope they will go away. In the right timing with the right words, bring them into the light. Four, share with your spouse what you need in this area and don't expect them just to know. Don't assume anything. Five, give constant reassurance to your spouse of how you feel about them and what they mean to you. This will build emotional intimacy, emotional connection and intelligence. And six, give one another permission to make mistakes and learn from them, knowing that mistakes are not failures, but opportunities to learn and grow and to develop this emotional intimacy, this emotional connection. Part of being in a marriage covenant with one another is being committed to growing together in all areas of this married life, which emotional connection or intelligence plays a massive part. So I hope this encourages you. I hope this gives you some skills and some things to apply. And just start giving it a go. Just start applying these things and grow and learn together. So some questions for us. How much value do you hold towards being emotionally intelligent? Why is it so vital we know how to engage on an emotional level with our spouse? Why is being emotionally available so important to the development of a healthy marriage? How easy do you find being vulnerable in your relationship and why? And why is giving the other person in the relationship permission to make mistakes so vital in this area of growth, of emotional intimacy, connection, intelligence. If you want to drop me a line, ask me a question, feels free to do so. Apart from that, we'll see you soon for the next part. Take care.